Hiya, it's Sarah from Mini Model World. Today is the day where I finally finished decorating this doll's house. This doll's house has been sat on our kitchen table for about a month now. It's driving everyone in the house mad, including me. But today I can finally finish the inside at least so my kids can start playing with it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I transform this into a beautifully decorated doll's house. I've already cut all the wallpaper and flooring that I'm going to use and I've already painted it. So if you watch to the end of the video, you'll be able to see what I've chosen and how it looks when it's all in place. So I've pre-cut all the flooring and all the wallpaper beforehand. I spent yesterday doing this. Uh, I've uploaded a blog post with how I did it all um, from measuring to fitting up and installing. And the link to this blog post is in the description below. But I will talk to you in this video as well about how I've done it. So before I started, I made sure that I prepared the doll's house. So I took out anything that wasn't attached. So that includes two staircases, a little balustrade, and there's three partitions like this. So I took those out of the doll's house. And then I used some white primer just to prime all the walls because it had been painted previously, but it was very, very patchy. Uh, so I just put a coat of white over the whole thing uh, just to smarten it up and to make sure that if I if I was leaving walls such as like the roof, uh, they'd look as smart as the rest of the house. So we're going to start with the bottom floor. So I decided that this was going to be the kitchen, this side, and this side was going to be the dining room. So the kitchen wallpaper is the only one I've actually stuck in place. It's just there. It's a lemon pattern. Uh, which I made in Canva and which you can download yourself if you want it for your doll's house. Again, I'll put the link uh, to the blog post below. The paint I used is Golden Sands, so you can see it a bit better on here. And that's a Dulux paint. And it comes in this very handy, just want to make sure it doesn't splash paint everywhere, very handy sample pot, which has got a little roller at the top. So I use this roller. Uh, to paint the walls and then finished off with a little paintbrush to do any bits where I couldn't reach with the roller. It was about £1.50, so it was the cheapest paint that I used uh, out of any that I used in the doll's house. So the flooring that I used is this one from Minimum World. It costs £4 for about twice as much as I've cut off here. Uh, because this doll's house has a lip, I ha I'm actually going to stick down the flooring because it's kept in place by this lip. And having removed flooring in the form of carpet from this doll's house before, it was an absolute nightmare. So I don't want to commit to any type of flooring and then have to remove it at a later date. So I'm not sticking any of the flooring in. So next to the kitchen, we've got the living room. The paint that I've done on the trim around the edges is this one. It's Enchanted Ivy by L Decor. I think that was about £4 from Home Base. And I've used quite a lot of it because as well as doing the trim, I also painted this side of the partition. I had to use quite a few coats to cover the primer. I got the flooring for the dining room from Doll's House Emporium. It was about £11 for this sheet. There was slightly more on the end uh, that I've cut off. And you can see it just peels off its self-adhesive and all these individual planks peel off. Now I didn't do that because again, I don't want to commit to sticking the flooring into this Doll's House forever. Uh, so I just chopped a bit off the edge that I needed unpeeled one plank very handily it was just one plank too wide so I peeled the plank off cut the back in and it fits so this is about two millimeters thick it's a veneer uh, and it's already cut into board so it looks very authentic and it just makes it look a little bit more high end so that goes in place on the ground floor and now I'm just going to stick the wallpaper in so the wallpaper is from my tiny world it's fade and water resistant I ordered these two separately because I didn't realise that I needed two to cover two sheets, sorry, to cover the area. So you can see there's a difference between the colours. Now I don't know if that's because I ordered them at different times, so the patterns change slightly, they've changed the style, or if it's just a bit of a printing error. But because of the size of the doll's house, I don't think anyone's going to notice. And I, to be honest, didn't care enough to reorder it and sort of investigate it further. Um, I'm just happy to get it finally in the doll's house. So I'm just going to apply some glue to the back of this. So I use glue stick glue for applying wallpaper. You can try Mod Podge, uh, craft glue, double sided tape, but I've found that just a glue stick works best. The thing that you have to be careful of is that sometimes it can get a bit clumpy 
Uh, so you just need to make sure it goes on smooth. So when it's in, you just smooth it out. You might want to use a ruler to do this, but actually this looks okay. Sometimes you can get little air bubbles that just need uh, smoothing out. But I think we're okay there. And then the final bit for this room is the partition. Now this is very, very tricky to get in and out. I should have sanded some off the top for this because it is a bit of a pain uh, to get in and out of the house. So I'm just going to try and get this in now. Okay, and that's the partition finally. And I told you it was difficult to get in. Um, so that's the ground floor. So we've got kitchen and dining room and now moving on to the middle floor. So for the rooms on the middle floor, I've got the bedroom here and the living room here. Just to start with the flooring, there was an absolute total disaster with the flooring because I originally bought this carpet from uh, Melody Jane to do the flooring. So I'd drawn my template. There's details on how to do that in the blog post that I've linked to. Uh, did my template out of cardboard, drew it all out, then traced around that to cut the flooring. But I've drawn the space where I did the space for the stairs on the back instead of the front. So if you look, I'm not sure if you can see, it's the complete wrong side. The stairs are actually here under the carpet. So had I done it the right way around, it would have fit lovely like that. But unfortunately, I did it wrong. So this is now, uh, I'm just going to save it, see if I can use it for another project. So because I've had this designated for the living room, I then had a bit of an issue because I didn't have any other, any other material that I could use for the flooring. I'd already cut a little bit of sheet parquet flooring for the bedroom. And that came in a large A3 sheet. So I used that for the whole flooring with a lot of faffing around. So this is what it looks like when I've cut it. So you can see I did the backing for it. The reason why I've done backing, it, well, it's two reasons. The first one is that it's very, very thin. So I knew that if the kids were like dragging the little furniture over it, playing with it, that it was gonna get ripped. And it's also quite difficult to apply thin paper to wood without it bubbling and wrinkling. So I've attached it to this cardboard back in as well and it just makes it a little bit stronger and the other reason why I did it was it's easier to measure so I take two pieces sorry three pieces actually of card together uh, and then measured it out and then cut a hole in for the stairs on the right side and then stuck it on here and I'll just show you you can see in the corner that was actually the bit for the bedroom flooring um, but I've managed to attach another little bit and cover it up so now the bedroom has a little sort of a bit with seams in, in the corner, but I'm not too worried about that uh, because I've got a tiny rug, which is actually a fabric sample from Dunelm. So I'm going to use that as a rug at the back just to cover my mistake. So for the bedroom, I wanted it to be really luxurious and sort of a nice little place for the little dolls to retreat to. I'm probably looking into this a bit too much. Um, so I used this, which is actually a table protector from Dunelm. Uh, it's quite thick, um, but it's very, very soft and it's got this nice pattern on it. So originally this was the floor, but then I had to recut it after I had my carpet disaster. Uh, so this is now for the wall, which I'll glue on in a second. And for the living room, I've used this wallpaper. This wallpaper is from Stick and Go Crafts and it's self-adhesive so you just peel it off and stick it straight on. And it was quite handy because I only had to cut a tiny piece off the top so it was almost the exact size. And then I've painted the side wall uh, with paint from Rust-Oleum. It's a uh, chalk based furniture paint and it was by far the best paint that I used in the doll's house. It just went on really well, only took a couple of coats and dried really quickly. So I'm now going to fit the wallpaper for this. So unlike the other wallpaper where I've used a uh, glue stick, for this one, because it's got a fabric back, I knew that if I used the glue stick, it would just bring the fabric up and stick to the end of the glue. So I'm actually going to use this adhesive spray. I should probably be doing this outside with a mask on, but we'll just go for it.
Okay, there we go. So that's the wallpaper for the bedroom stuck down. And then the other wall I've just painted in this mocha colour. For the living room, I've got this self-adhesive wallpaper. So I'm going to stick this in now as well. I'm actually a bit nervous about doing this because I feel with self-adhesive wallpaper, once it's stuck, there's not a lot you can do. You can't sort of wiggle it round uh, like you can with other glue. So I'm just going to go for it and we'll see what happens. You can see it just peels off quite easily. It's going to be quite difficult to reach. There you go. So as you can see, that took quite a bit of faffing about but I've managed to do it once it's on it's great because it just sticks at every single corner every side uh, you don't have to worry about covering the whole thing with glue because it's already stuck down uh, yeah so it looks great once it's in it's just a bit faffy trying to get it so it doesn't gather up and wrinkle uh, but yeah that's the living room so I've got this partition we've got this uh, duck egg colour on this side and the mocha colour for the bedroom on this side This one goes in much easier than the other one. There we go, so that's the middle floor done. So we're now on to the top room of the house. As you see, I've had to move the camera uh, just so you can see what's going on up here. So here we've got the bathroom and the kids' bedroom. So starting with the kids' bedroom, this is where I cut the carpet correctly after my middle floor disaster. Um, so just like I did with the parquet flooring, I created a template out of two pieces of card, used masking tape to stick this together and measured up the card first before cutting the carpet. Uh, so once I was happy with the card, I then cut round the carpet and it slots into place like that. So I was a bit unsure about this colour at first because it's very, very bright, but I do feel it lifts the whole room up uh, and just makes it all a bit brighter. Uh, the carpet is meant to be self-adhesive, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to get the backing off. So I just, again, used a glue stick uh, to stick it down. And then at the side, I've got this lovely blue colour as well. For the bathroom, I've used this. This was 2 pounds from Dunnell Mill for a, a huge roll. It's actually a non-slip drawer liner. Uh, I've got a video about hacks for dollhouse flooring, which I'll put the link in below. So you don't have to spend a fortune on dollhouse flooring at all. As I say, this was 2 pounds for, I think it was about a metre or more roll. Um, so I've got that for the flooring. There's no wallpaper in the upstairs room, simply because I didn't even know where to start trying to measure out triangular wallpaper. <laughs> so I took the coward's way out and didn't bother. And also I like that the ceiling's just white as well. Uh, there's another partition that goes up here. This grey paint is this little one from Rustoleum. So it's the same brand that I did the middle floor duck egg blue with. And out of all the paints I've tried, Rustoleum just sort of head and shoulders above the other, really. Uh, it's quick drying, it's water based, uh, and yeah, it just goes on really, really easily. So this is the partition. We've got the blue on this side and the grey on this side, and then that just goes in the top it might not stay up because I do need to glue it in. So that's it that is the finished interior of the doll's house finally my family can get the kitchen table back now after having hogged it for at least a month uh, trying to revamp this doll's house. It has been a real labour of love I can't say that I've enjoyed it all but I've definitely learned a lot and some bits uh, like choosing the wallpaper and the flooring I've just found uh, an opportunity to be really creative with it and I've really enjoyed uh, those bits but the measuring not so much because uh, numbers aren't my thing so measuring out the flooring uh, was quite difficult but uh, yeah in the end we did it we got there and um, so when the kids get home they can finally play with it so the next thing to do is the exterior and the stairs uh, so look out for videos uh, on how to do those so thanks very much for watching I'm Sarah from minimodelworld.com please like and subscribe this video and I'll see you very soon bye